Reverend B, and I want to welcome you into this place to the channel of St. Albans Baptist Church, where the Reverend Dr. Curtis T. Harding Jr. is our pastor, and his wonderful, beautiful First Lady is Reverend Inez Harding. We thank you that you chose us to join this afternoon. So if you're a first-time visitor, we welcome you into this place. We are the church with the warm welcome. So when you get a chance, write in the comments. Tell us where you're from. Tell us a little bit about yourself, because we want to love on you. If you are returning, we thank you for coming back, family. We can't wait to worship with you on today. So we want you to sit back, relax, and guess what? You're about to be in for a worship experience like never before. We welcome you, everybody. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you once again, as humbly as we know how to. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for the grace and the mercy that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. Lord, right now, we invite your presence among us. Lord, you said where there's two or three of us to get gathered together, that you will be among the midst. Heavenly Father, we ask you right now to continue to look upon this branch of Zion that we call the St. Albans Baptist Church. Lord, continue to bless from the pulpit to the door from the seal to the floor. Lord, send a special blessing and anointing on our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Curtis Young Jr., his wife, the Reverend Ian S. Harding. Lord, continue to look upon the congregation of this house, Lord, especially through these times of this pandemic. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Right now, Heavenly Father, we ask you just to send a word. Send a word, Lord, that will just be our spiritual being right now, Lord. Heavenly Father, continue to look upon us, and we'll continue to give you all of the praise, all of the glory. In the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. We honor you in spirit and in truth, for you are the true and living God. We welcome your anointing, we welcome your spirit, and we welcome you. Come and sit with us this morning as we welcome you in this place. Yes.
praises to God, to Pastor Harding, to First Lady Harding, to all of St. Albans congregation, and to all my father's people. I am reading the scripture for today, which is James 5, verse 7 to 10. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold the husbandman, waiting for the precious fruit of the earth, and have long patience for it, until he receive the early and later rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge stands before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. I have read you James 5, verse 7 through 10. The words of the Lord is blessed.
Every how and head is bowed, eyes are closed. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your joy. Thank you for saving grace. Thank you for salvation. Now, Lord, as we prepare to speak from your word, anoint this courtesy heart and tune once again, that I may say what thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I, I want to preach from this subject. It's just around the corner. It's just around the corner. Advent is all about patience. It's about waiting for something that is fast approaching, inevitable and close at hand. And of course, that something is the Messiah, the Son of God. As a kid, I remember how hard it was to wait for Christmas. Just knowing that my parents, my presents rather, were hidden somewhere was enough to drive me crazy. Whenever I was alone, I would search and search for those color colorfully wrapped surprises tucked away for Christmas morning, but I never found them. I realize now they were probably in my mother's room or at a neighbor's house. But there was no abundance of patience in me during the holiday season waiting for the big day, Christmas. How, how do you wait for something that's coming down the road or just around the corner? The hard part is knowing that it is coming. If you didn't know, you you wouldn't affect it wouldn't affect you. But when something is, as they say, within spitting distance or right under your nose, all five senses are on the edge, waiting, waiting for the imminent arrival. The Advent season started the, at the end of November, the time in the Christian calendar when the universal church focuses on the coming of Christ. For 30 days, we center our attention on the reality of Christ's coming, his breaking and entering into a sinful world to redeem and restore. Yes, the top department stores impose themselves on our event season, on, on our advent season, turning it into a, a marketing dream. And launch, they launch and they launch participation in October so they can get the best bang for your buck. And the desire for patience, once again, takes center stage. Patience with over anxious children. Patience with visiting relatives. Patience with backed up traffic. Patience with the overwhelming task of cleaning and cooking yes. and decorating. Yes. But as hard as it is to have to wait 30 to 60 days, what if you had to wait 430 years for Christmas? What are you talking about, Pastor? Glad you asked. That's how long the Israelites had to wait Amen. Amen. 
through God's silence and to wait through God's silence for their, their promised Messiah. Amen. Amen. That's why today, if you look at Malachi and Matthew, there's 400 years uh, between those two books yeah. where God was silent and did not say anything. Okay. But patience is an acquired virtue. Yeah. You must be taught yeah. to be patient. Yeah. I'm reminded of a certain lady who prayed a great deal for patience. Yeah. She complained to her friend that while she prayed for patience, all she seemed to get was trouble. Mm -hmm. Her wise friend said, the Lord is sending you trouble in order to produce patience in you. All right. It's the only way to teach patience. Yeah, patience. How many times have you prayed for patience and the Lord sent you a misbehaving child mm -hmm. or a demanding boss? or a spouse who is difficult to live with. Yes. It was all an answer to your prayer for patience. Yes. Make me patience, that's what we say. If you, if you have no opportunity to practice patience, you will never acquire it. James, the author of our text, is asking the reader to be patient. be patient. Not for 30 days or 60 days, but for as long as it takes for the Lord to come. Yeah. James isn't waiting for Christmas. He's waiting for Christ's second coming. The day when Christ promised he would return to claim his bride, yes. the church. Yes, sir. Some of the apostles thought that Christ would come back in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. They had seen Christ ascend into the heavens on the day of Christ's ascension. Mm -hmm. And they were waiting for him to return in the same manner. Amen. Amen. James tried to put a time, a time frame on their waiting with his analogy of a farmer waiting for his ripe harvest yes. through the cycle of seasons. James knew that Christ had said, Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour when Christ, the Son of Man, cometh. But he also knew something about the impatience of all human beings. So he's teaching us in three ways the art of patience. First, James teaches us that patience is rooted in the heart. James says in verse 7, Be also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draws nigh. Yeah. Amen. 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 When God created man, he made us so that the heart could store a lot of information. Yes. The heart stores your character, yes, your personality. Yes your gifts yes. and talents, yes. your drive yes. and your commitment. Yes. The heart of man is that storage place yes. for all that God teaches us. Yes. A believer by the name of W.J. Dawson once said, I remember what happened to me when I read Romans 10 and 10. It changed me yes. at the darkest moment of my life. Yes. I stopped trying. I stopped trying to understand God with my own intellect. 
but to trust him with my heart. Yeah. Romans 10 and 10 says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. When we search for patience, our search has to begin in our heart. Why? Because it's patience goes against the human nature. Patience goes against the human nature. We are naturally impatient, edgy, and intolerant. We don't like the idea of waiting. We want things our way and we want it now. And that's why many of these fast food joints have food available for us because we, it, it knows that we don't like to wait. We want things our way, as I said, and we want it now. Our mind, our mind doesn't understand why we have to wait. But God says, with the mind, what the mind cannot understand, the heart can. Yes. The second uh, chapter of James teaching us, patience helps us from getting weary. James says, grudge not one another, brethren lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge stands at the door. It's a, bit, it's a bit scary to realize how well John knows our nature. Put a bunch of us in a room and all vain for attention, the desire to be heard, and before you know it, we're all frustrated with each other. I can imagine the discussion among the apostles and the members of the early church about Christ's return. Everybody must have had an opinion. The discussions probably got really heated at times. In fact, the Bible suggests that the waiting day, uh, waiting gave way to the birth of different factions and denominations of the church, which convulsed and complicated beliefs. That's what we do, you know. When we don't have the answer, and our patience, oh yes, runs out. All right. We just fill in the blanks ourselves. And we get ourselves into trouble. The bottom line is lack of patience causes division among us. While patience draws us together, impatience separates us. Let me paraphrase what James means. Don't let your impatience separate you from your brothers and sisters in Christ. Be patient with each other and let's wait this thing out together. Finally, James teaches us that patience is taught by example. Say amen if you will. James says, take my Brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and patience. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There is no better example of patience than the prophets who, who despite ridicule and persecution persevered 
in their calling to warn Israel to repent. Uh -huh. Most of us would have given up on Israel in a hurry. Well, right. Amen. Uh, mm -hmm. When I read this story in the Bible, I said, wow, God was sure enough patient with us. Yes. We have a hard time hanging in there with our own family members who persist in their foolishness. The prophets teach us that patience is acquired through affliction. Now don't go to sleep on me. During World War II, there was a man in Athens, Greece, who was condemned to execution by the Nazis during their occupation of Greece. Seven bullets went through his body and he was left for dead. But he escaped death and was attended by a Christian who shared the love of the Savior. The man came to know Christ. Despite being paralyzed over 80% of his body and an excruciating pain that kept him in bed for most of the time. This man began to share his joy in the midst of affliction. In fact, a, a radio announcer heard about him and came to visit him. His story was broadcast on the air in Athens. The radio announcer invited those who were suffering to write to this invalid. Those who, were, uh, who knew the secret of being joyful in the midst of affliction. Local newspapers picked up the story too. And the invalid and the invalid Christians soon had a congregation, listen, right. of 9,000 people all over the world who wrote to him asking the secret of his joy. The, Lord. the invalid turned missionary, wrote more than 38,000 individual letters of testimony before he received his heavenly reward. He learned a valuable lesson that we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation work in patience and patience experience and experience hope. The Israelites waited through 400 and 30 years of God's silence wow. for the coming of the Christ child. Yeah, all right. Many gave up their faith, yeah. gave up on their faith. Many more simply grew weary of waiting yes. and pushed the thought out of their minds. Wow. We don't have to wait no. because we know that Christ Right, yeah. has already come. Yeah. But as we wait, yeah. as we await our celebration of his coming, yeah. we also celebrate the promise yeah. that he's coming again. Yeah. Christ would come and could come at any moment yeah. to claim his own. Yeah. When he comes, what, what state of mind will you be in? Yeah. Praise will you be weary and well-doing? Oh. Or will you have already given up? No. Will you be living the careless life of someone who's not attuned to the promise of, the, of Christ's return? Oh. Or will Christ find you living with patience and expectation? Oh, yeah. Christ Jesus yeah. Is coming. He's coming. He, he, he's, he's just around the corner. Right. 
not the Christ of Christmas, but the Christ of judgment. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh yes, oh yes. Will you be ready when he comes again to receive you as himself? Christ spoke to John, the disciple, on the Isle of Patmos about his second coming. Listen, here's what he said. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Will your record be one of patience and perseverance? Christ is just around the corner. He's coming back when the last battle has been fought. When the last enemy has been conquered. When the last tear has been shed. When the last cross has been carried. Can you wait patiently? Romans 5 and 4 says that patience breeds hope. The hope of life without death. The hope of peace without strife. The hope of, of love without limits. The hope of truth without deceit. The hope of safety without fear. The hope of abundance without need. The hope of comfort without pain. Joy without sorrow. Yes. Glory without gloom, yes. trust without disappointment, yes. and worship without any rush. Yes. Can you wait patiently for Christ oh, yes. to come? Oh, yes. He's just around the corner. Yes. And if you belong to him, he's coming for you. Yes. Say amen. Yes. Time is filled with swift transition. Yes. Nor the earth unmoved yes. can stand. Yes. Build your hopes on things eternal. Yes. Hold to God's oh, God. unchanging hand. Yes. Oh yes. yes, trust in Him yes. who will not leave you. Yes. Whatsoever yes. years may bring, yes. if your earthly friends forsake Him, still more closely to Him cling. Hold to his hand. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things in heaven. And hold and hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. Amen. As I think about time being filled with truth, with transition, you need to be saved. And the only way you can be saved is through Jesus. It's not through your works. It's not through anything like that that you can do. You must trust the Lord. Believe on him as the scripture has said, and thou shalt, and thou shalt be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. Come on, let's give it up for our pastor for that wonderful word. If you were feeling it, let me see you put some emojis in the chat. Let us know how you feel because I don't know about you, but I feel fired up. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. Well, the worship does not stop here. Guess what? It is offering time amen it is offering time god loves a cheerful giver so we invite you to serve through giving at this time you can give in three ways all right not one not two but three ways go to sabcny.org click give online and you can give either through the portal you can text to give or you can send a check right onto the church we thank you so much for everyone who has given thus far you are amazing all right now you already know 
SABC got some weekly things going on. Monday nights, you can catch us at 7 p.m. for Bible study. Bible study is an interactive time where we have with our very own Reverend Dr. Curtis T. Harding Jr. You can sign on Zoom and get a more in-depth understanding of who God is. Then you can shoot over on Wednesday nights and we have our prayer call where everyone calls in from all over the world and we really get to encourage one another through prayer. If you need any midweek assistance, you can call us on Mondays or Fridays and get one-on-one -on -one prayer with one of our reverends, our ministers, or our deacons, all right? So also on Sundays at 10 a.m., we are still having Sunday school, everybody. You can either call in or you can join in one of the classes through Zoom. So make sure you are attending Sunday school. Also on Sundays at 2 p.m., we have our wow session with our youth and young adults where we come together and we really impart in our young people. Now, I wanna tell you that we have some exciting things coming up. Everybody say December 25th, all right? It's not just Christmas day, but it's also our production of our candlelight service spearheaded by Reverend Kalima Wilson. We will be having a live broadcast on YouTube that day at 7 p.m., our candlelight service. So we invite you to click in, to join, to write in the comments, to share it with your friends, share it with your family, because although we are apart, we are still together and we wanna give honor to our God Father, amen? So we thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. We hope that we will see you next week and the week after that. And guess what? The week after that, because we just love you so much. So we thank you. We thank God for you. Make sure that you stay safe, stay blessed, wear your mask, because we want this pandemic thing to end. Amen? Amen. So we thank you, everybody. Have a great week. God bless.